Hey everyone, and welcome back to, I guess we should call this our international gamers here. It's actually episode 104 of Canadian Gamers, which is pretty wild. And who's my special guest today? Hello everybody, it's Ahmed. It's been a long time. <laughs> it has indeed. It's been a long time, uh, even with Stephen and I. Like We took, uh, we took a little break, not intentionally, but uh, Stephen ditched me. And uh, we were never able to uh, sort of like get back together. It took us, uh, I'd say, about a month. So I think that we missed like two episodes or something like that. It wasn't yeah. too, too bad, yeah. all things considered. But when I found out that you were free... I was like, ah, oh, sweet, because I haven't spoken to you in quite some time. And there's been a lot of stuff that's happened, not only in the last little while, but uh, over the year. So I thought we could do kind of a, a year-end wrap-up. And I'm putting this under the, the more general Canadian gamers, even though I'm pretty sure we're going to be talking a lot about Nintendo-specific stuff. But that's mm. okay. That's, that's cool. So the first thing I wanted to ask you is just, what have you been up to? Oh wow! For me, it's uh, uh, obviously we'll get we'll get to you after I, I give give you the catch up. But uh, we've both been busy busy from the <laughs> the real life standpoint, and uh, obviously that decreases our time with gaming and whatnot. Uh, I finished my master's degree abroad, uh, the master's of public health. It's been grueling and challenging, but uh, thankfully it's it's been a it's been an excellent experience. Uh, my wife and I actually she she took her master's and I did mine as well. Uh, Congratulations! Our, yeah, thank you so much. It was uh, it was uh, such an uh, it was such a fun experience living abroad, like for uh, for two years. You know, it's uh, we were fresh off of marriage. I think we, we we married like we were like married for a year and a half, and then we immediately went to abroad. It's very different uh, than uh, living here back home because you're basically all all on your own, and we also have our kid uh, Talia with us over there. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. It's it, grueling, you know. It's it's hard juggling everything, but it it went well. And uh, thankfully, she also uh, uh, passed her masters. As soon as she finished, we uh, went back here to Saudi. And uh, right now, we're setting up uh, a home. And this is news for you as well, Jared. Um, uh, we're expecting a second child. Congrats, yeah. man! I was Thank waiting so for much. that. I was waiting yeah. for that. I was like, okay, <laughs> it's gotta, it's gotta be happening. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, so it's all that uh, bundled up together. It's hectic, but uh, it's been wonderful. You know, it's, it's. Uh, I'm blessed with uh, the whole experience. I went back to the workforce after I finished my scholarship, uh, and right now we're trying to set up a home and whatnot. You know, all this, uh, just uh, shopping around and looking around for kitchens, bathrooms, and tiles and whatever. You know, all that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been a grueling month, yeah. So uh, uh, with all that juggling up, uh, it's it's been difficult to catch up with games, but I've been trying my best. Uh, thankfully, I, even though I, I'm not a Nintendo Pan boy per se, but uh, the Switch has been a miracle with me in terms of gaming. And, and I'm sure you're going to be stating the same stuff because it's just easy to get into and, and play on in your couch or in your bed, uh, just get like a quick hour or, or whatnot. You don't need to like be dedicated to the TV. You so know, that's uh, yeah. it. That's yeah, exactly yeah. that's exactly it. It's just I find that so funny when um, when people talk about the switch, uh, especially on YouTube, some of the comments and stuff like that. I get a real kick out of it because you can really tell those people who have lots of time and those that well don't because mm. like I have not used my PlayStation Four and or my my xbox one my xbox one is actually like gone it's been gone for my god probably like a year and a half or maybe even two years now <laughs> wow and yeah and even my my playstation 4 like i mean we keep it around if we want to watch like uh you know like a blu-ray or something Netflix. like that yeah exactly yeah. but for the most part it's it's like you say it, it's so funny it's like the struggle is real just turning on my TV to play something is actually not a chore, but it's much easier said than done. And that's the beauty of the switch. I swear to you, I, I must play like 98% of the switch is played in portable mode just mm. because of that. Just because it's like, when the hell are you going to have time to actually sit in front and like, you know, watch TV. But I just, I want to go back with you just a sec. So this is great. So you're back in your hometown, I assume. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm uh, back here in Saudi Arabia, Jeddah. Yeah. Uh, we've been back for, I would say since the late September. 
So it's been a few months. Uh, uh, like I said, just uh, going back to the workforce. And uh, uh, thankfully, uh, uh, because I, I took my master's, they sort of set me up to a direction in which like... Uh, uh, it's related to public health. It's like public health department under the hospital. Uh, before I took my master's, I'm, I was actually in a primary health care you know, facility as mm -hmm. a GP. So uh, the system here is a bit uh, different than uh, most... Uh, oh, maybe it's, I would say it's similar. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with uh, how the medical system is outside of uh, our country. But uh, as soon as you finish bachelor's, you're, you're a GP officially. A bachelor's of medicine and surgery, you're a GP. You could work as a GP with your bachelor's, but in the okay. same time, if you want to continue uh, like a residency program, you need to apply and, and it depends on the seat. And every year they have certain seats for certain res residency specialties. And that's why I took the, uh, basically, that's why I took the uh, scholarship because uh, I've been applying for residency for the past, like ever since I've been uh, employed for four years and I just couldn't find a seating for that because okay. they sort of prioritize people who have higher GPAs and there's the Saudi medical license exam that also they need to get a high mark on that. And I, it's just hard to get that, uh, that, uh, that attention and that high mark. So the scholarship was my uh, second option. And and it, thankfully, it worked out very well because it's steering me towards a direction like a mixture between public health and like uh, administrative work with doctors and seeing patients at the same time. I don't want to be uh, either or. Like I, I still want to have the patient relationship, but mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, it's nice to have like these the extracurricular outside of work that like you know help the, helps the hospital in the overall scope and whatnot. So that's what I'm doing right now. No, that's awesome, man. That that's really really awesome. So, where exactly did you go? You said you were abroad, but I, like you were in the UK, right? Yes, it was uh, Cardiff, Cardiff University. Uh, they're amazing. Uh, Wales is absolutely amazing, man. Uh, they're so friendly over there, and they were so welcoming to us. Uh, and the teachers, everything there was amazing. Like I, I loved the whole experience. Obviously, with you, as you know, masters, or even the MBA programs, they sort of like it's not like the bachelors. It's not like school. You, you, they give you the time to think for yourself on what to do. They're not gonna spoon feed you all the information. So this sense of discovery of like, okay, read about this, read about that, uh, try to think about this more. So it was that type of uh, tutoring, and it was uh, actually a wonderful, uh, an eye-opening experience for me, uh, especially the. Uh, thesis or dissertation that I did. <laughs> and what about your wife? Did she did she enjoy it as well? Like, did she? Yes, yes, she did. Uh, she took a master's of uh, translation, uh, French English. Uh, oh, really? She teaches. Uh, yeah, she teaches French uh, in the uh, uh, university. It's called Kingdom uh, King Abdulaziz University in Jeddah. So they she's um, she has a bachelor of uh, foreign languages or European languages, and French is her like subspecialty you would say okay. so uh, it was it made sense to do a french english thing because her uh, her arabic is is obviously good but uh because she's been teaching french for so long and 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 and, and exposed with european languages it was easier to do a a french english type of thing uh, instead of like arabic english or arabic french and and also the university that she was in didn't have like a powerful arabic program per se as much okay. as the english and french so yeah it was it was grueling for her especially because uh uh, uh, she w we, 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 she was pregnant during the time towards the end of her studies with uh, our second child. So it was very difficult to balance everything. But uh, amazingly, she did very well. So when is the when when is the the little one due? Uh, she's due. Uh, he or she? We, we did the choice of not knowing the gender. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they, when are yeah. they due? <laughs> yeah. Uh, at February. Okay. All right, yeah. so man, coming up then. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh boy! Wish us luck and pray for us. Yeah, dude. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do. And how how old is the uh, the other little one right now? Two years old, believe it My or not. My lord, man, yeah. time. This is time crazy. flies so fast. I, I remember still talking to you and telling you that we we're expecting the first. <laughs> yeah, the first child. Yeah. Well, the good news is at 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 like her age, the good news is that she's not gonna uh, like you know she doesn't have fifty friends and stuff. That's the thing when you're traveling and you're going abroad mm. and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, well, good. So the house, do you actually have the house? Because you were saying uh, you're looking for kitchens and stuff like that. Uh, yes, now. yes. The, the house is here. It's just that we need to renovate it. Okay, because, okay. Yeah. yeah. It needs to be like an extreme renovation because it hasn't been used in a while. So, yeah. Oh, boy, man. Yeah. It sounds like, uh, well, we'll see yeah, how much gaming you've actually done <laughs> over the last little while. Uh, actually, it's, it was, it's been quite nice. You know, I, I've put in more than I expected. Uh 
for me, you know, you know how I uh, when I when I finish something, I like to give like a I don't want to play anything after. Uh, for for me, uh, the last thing I finished was Xenoblade Two, and it took me like chipping over the past year since December. Wow. And I finished it right around October, so it, it it took me that long to to finish one ninety hours of gameplay. Wow! Uh, from December man. until October, yeah. So I'm just it, on, on like a daily basis or every two days, I I I like chip in an hour, an hour or two, and you know how huge that game is. Uh, yes. So that was that was the major game for me, and I and uh, my bias obviously, even though it's a 2017 release, uh, I could tell you it's my game of the year because of how how long I've been playing it. And after I finished it, I took a, like a a, a mental <laughs> uh, rest from gaming for until uh, Smash Ultimate, which was recently released. Yeah, well, that's what I wanted to dig into uh, yeah. a little bit. So basically, your your main go to this this I guess you could say this year was uh, Xenoblade 2 and what yes. what changed because like when you started off you you shared some of my sentiments mm. and then it then it like really grew on you um well how did that happen like what uh, uh... That's, that's an excellent question I thought I think it's it's similar to Xenoblade 1 it was sort of like an eventual change it didn't like not it nothing like snapped per se for me like oh this was the changing point for me uh, it grew on me bit by bit as I uh, chipped away and started playing it and obviously the thing that maybe that changed my perspective is when they started patching the game throughout the year and a lot of complaints that you had when you were playing it uh, it was uh, was basically patched up with the mini map and whatnot not everything but a lot of the issues that you had were patched up uh, as uh, time went on and obviously they, with the patches they also added like small content like a, a blade or two here and there okay. new side quests so every time i get back to the game i i think that i'm i'm finishing all the side quests and suddenly i get this like bunch of dlc side quests with the, with the expansion pass uh, that further extended my playtime and whatnot so that was very interesting and hmm. uh, i think what uh, obviously it's not without without its flaws i i sort of prefer Xenoblade 1 with its affinity chart uh, this one is a bit hard to follow but at the same time it's sort of I sort of like went into a groove and got used to the the negatives and the issues I had with the game you know yeah for sure you sort of like turn off everything and okay I know this is an issue but I'm, I'm starting to get used to it because of how I like, I got into a groove with 190 hours so <laughs> The one game that I really wanted you to play this year, uh, which I knew that, you know, considering, like, because I knew you were busy as well, and I knew you were mm. going crazy. Uh, I really hope you do get a chance, well, at least when it comes on Switch, is that you get a chance to play Dragon Quest, because I'd love yeah. to hear your uh, your thoughts on that. And I've seen some really mixed, I don't want to say reviews, but, like, now that it's been out for a long time, and... Yeah. And that, like, some of the big guys on, like, Kotaku and just some big YouTubers and stuff in general have really different opinions on the game. And some are like, oh, well, you know, it's, I don't know what it is, why I fell out with it. Others are like, ah, it was all right, and so on and so forth. So um, when, I just hope you get a chance. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely supported it on, on launch because... Uh, I think you, uh, we, you and I, we've been uh, having the same mentality regarding uh, supporting games, especially on launch. We're sort of like decreasing, uh, and it's obviously lighter on our wallets, wallets in the sense of not buying everything uh, on one go and launch. Especially since now they're getting discounts immediately, yep. like two, yep. three months after. You could, I think, Dragon Quest, like I think they discounted it to to thirty bucks or something of that sort. Uh, a month or two ago and even with the black friday and the christmas deals and all that but there are a few games that i, I just can't i need to you know i want to support like dragon quest for again they, I, I actually got the the limited edition on launch okay, because i was so right. hype because and and your uh, review and your impressions got me so excited so i have that on hand and i definitely really really want to play it because it it does sound like it's my sort of game it has the this is similar like you know with with, with the side quest and the content and the post game yeah, it has yeah. a lot of content, and I love games that like engross me into the uh, the world that they are building. Uh, the one with Kotaku, I don't know if you heard of uh, Tim Rogers. Yeah, uh, sure. This guy, he's the, <laughs> I, if you ever seen his Dragon Quest review, like it's forty minutes long. It's not even a review. It's him ranting about the game, and he's uh, I would say he's, he's he's as big as a fan as you because he's been playing the Japanese releases as well. He's been living in Japan and whatnot. So when he talks about the game passionately, it's it's you know it's. Uh, 
it also like increases my hype even more. Uh, I, I think the only negative, big negative that Westerners had for the game is the soundtrack. I yeah. won't say that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah. OST. And I just, I don't know. Uh, like, I don't know how it did. Like, yeah, same here. Same here. They've been marketing it aggressively, man. I, they, I, I they noticed. Have. Like, they went to conferences. They went to like a lot of PAX. It does shows like PAX East. They're showcasing it even post-launch. Even now with social media, with the discounts, they they even put in a, a couple of free DLC costumes, like the one from Dragon Quest Eight, and like a weapon for the guys who have PS Plus. That sort of stuff I've noticed, which is interesting. No, that's just it. And uh, I'm yeah. like, I'd really like, that's all great, right? Like the marketing yeah. and all this sort of stuff. But I, it's weird that like, we haven't heard a single thing in terms of how it actually mm. performed. Yeah, I'm curious. I wonder if they have any numbers on, on, on DQ. And I don't know how, uh, again, Square Enix's expectations usually are, are super high. And they're like, uh, I would say uh, illogically high. So I don't know what the expectations that they had for the localization. But I'm sure they were a bit higher than usual because they, they put a lot of effort in, in, in changing the game and, and giving voice acting and whatnot. Well, that's just it. And I'm not... I'm not sure. I'm really, really not sure. And speaking of uh, Dragon Quest, eh? Uh, I'm not sure if you have been paying any attention to like any of the stuff that's been going on, but uh, they they showcased the first trailer for the Switch version. Oh yeah, I've uh, I've seen a couple of screenshots. I didn't see the trailer, but wow, I I didn't expect him to match the PS4 that good. Yeah, and uh, so it looks like it really looks like it's going to be the international release, which mm. was my prediction all along. Was that that's pretty much what they were going to do? Uh, they're going to actually have, believe it or not, a showcase on January first. Wow, the new year, huh? Yeah, they're uh, going to hold a uh, a little micro conference, if you will. Okay. That they're going to uh, showcase the game, talk about its release date, how much it's going to cost. Uh, for those that don't know, that's always actually a really important thing because Dragon Quest is not a locked game. In fact, mm. none of the games in Japan are locked, meaning that it's not like in North America where you have like uh, it's fifty nine ninety nine or sixty nine ninety nine. In Japan, prices fluctuate like crazy. So, oh, like wow. Dragon Quest, yeah, Dragon Quest could launch at ninety nine ninety nine, for example. Wow. That is an insane price. Yeah, wow. it, it it usually doesn't there, but I'm just yeah. saying, like it, it's not locked, so yeah. it's going to be uh, interesting. I'm I'm curious if uh, Sugiyama will uh, actually allow the orchestrated soundtrack for the Switch this time around. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's funny that right. Uh, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see. I, I'm actually really looking forward to this. I have some plans on uh, January first, but I will mm-hmm. take some time to to check this out. And it's funny because it's the first time in i think ever if i'm if i'm not exaggerating that i i'm not buying the latest dragon quest game dragon quest builders 2 was just released and thanks to the switch being so region free it's as simple as me just logging in with my japanese account going to the switch uh what is it called the the east shop or east store or whatever it's called and just downloading dragon quest Builders too. You no longer have the need to import it or anything like that. And it can mm. be mine in like 15 minutes. But the downside is if I do that, I'm going to fail my MBA. Um, <laughs> and that's... And, and that's, speaking of which, yeah, you, you, you need to uh, catch me up on the latest. What are you already up to with the MBA and the, your break and whatnot? So essentially, uh, the program's broken down into... It's a two-year MBA program. Now, okay. in Canada, uh, like... Off screen, guys, uh, Amit and I have been speaking just a little bit before this, and we were talking about mm-hmm. part time MBAs and stuff like that. So basically, yeah, it, there's what are called full time MBAs and part time MBAs. Part time MBAs, it, it's essentially for people who want to keep working, and it's a reduced workload. So obviously, it lasts longer and stuff like that. Um, however, what I'm doing is neither one of those. Okay, I'm Mm -hmm. doing what's called an executive MBA and an executive MBA is sort of an amalgamation of a full time MBA program with the challenges that are associated with working. And now the idea with this is, is that you get proprietary courses. So the courses are not identical to your full time regular MBA. And so where where students might spend 13 weeks on, say, 
I don't know, two subjects or something like that within, say, supply chain management or something, what we'll do is we'll spend one week on that. And it's up to mm. you to to fill in the blanks, to do the additional readings, do the additional assignments, stuff like that. A lot of the homework is based on live cases. So these are essentially case studies, stuff like that. Uh, you also have actual interactions with businesses. So like instead of it being, say, theoretical, you actually get to go and visit real companies and take on real challenges that companies are facing. Oh, that's and so cool. It's a practical thing. Yeah, okay. exactly. So, well, it's both. So yeah. it's like you'll learn stuff for like, say, the first half of the semester. And then in the second half of the semester, you're still learning. You still have to come to class and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But the expectation is like, okay, so we want you now to go to different companies and apply some of these concepts that you've learned. And this can be exceedingly challenging. So like yeah. we went to a, a company in the U.S. So you got to figure out, okay, so I'm working. I've got all this homework and stuff to do with the MBA. When the hell am I going to have time to drive down to the States or fly down to the States or whatever it is to do this particular project? And this, this was the real challenge. The number one challenge with the, the MBA program, so far anyway, has been time management. And that's why mm. I said like with video games and stuff like that, there's, there's no lie. Like I did not play anything. Nothing. Because you just can't. You cannot get mm. sidetracked at all because doing so i'm not kidding like you will fail like there's there's no oh maybe or or something like that no there's no chance you're going so, to fail. so why did you uh, choose to actually go for the executive or the full-time instead of uh, the part-time if there was that option is there because a difference of, yes because of how fast it's done it's finished in two oh. years instead of three or four so you wanted the the speed that that was a priority for you to finish. Yeah, it well, that's exactly it. I wanted I wanted this done. It's only the program's only. I don't want to lie to you. I think it's somewhere between fourteen and seventeen months. Okay, so that 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 uh, speed aspect is the one that got you like okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the executive instead yeah, of part time. That's it. And, and are this there any is... perks like in terms of uh, the part times? Also, they go travel and 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 do the practical stuff, or is just they the executive? do, but not to this level. The other thing that okay. I really liked was that uh, the executive level you you really are treated like an executive. It costs, mm, mm, mm. Uh, oh boy, I think it's like five times the cost of a regular MBA. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's almost okay. $100,000 for, eh. um, for the the whole program. Wow. But, but you don't pay, uh, pay, you don't have to do anything in terms of the the BS of selecting courses and all that jazz, you don't have to do any of that okay. stuff. Okay, they do everything that for you. They, they set up everything for you. Yeah, like basically. They, that, yeah, okay. so basically I show up, it alternates, it's one day of school, it alternates between Friday and Saturday. Week one, mm -hmm. it's Friday, week two, it's Saturday, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And you, st you basically show up at 7 a.m., have breakfast, which they provide for you, and then it's courses straight to lunch. Then they provide lunch to you. And then it's it basically finishes at around 6 o'clock. And, okay. and then that's that. Then you have one week to learn everything that's necessary mm. uh, for the next class, plus do assignments, do homework, do this, do And your do job. That. Yeah, and your <laughs> job. Uh, uh, now, the good news is it's also very much team-based. So, oh, so you have, okay, like a, it's a... Uh, team leader and a cohort and whatnot, that stuff like that. Well, there's stuff like that, yeah, at the higher level, but there's also individual teams. So, like, okay. I have a team of four other individuals, so we're a team of five. And How are you assigned, by the way? It's up to you. You're an executive, okay, nice. you figure okay. it out. That's the okay. that's the way they did it. So I okay. strategically looked at the the people in the cohort and I was like, okay, like, you know, this person is like a director of marketing. This one is a data analyst. This one, you know, is strong and, oh, sorry. Uh, this one's a, a an accountant and this one's strong at like um, uh, speaking and stuff like that. This would make a good group and we got along and so on and so forth. And anyways, uh, we ended up being the top team. Three of the people in my uh, in my specific team, myself included, got the highest GPA Con in the congratulations. Uh, by the way, yeah, yeah I've thanks. seen the post. That was an amazing accomplishment, dude. That, yeah, I was honestly, yeah. I was very, very proud of myself because yeah. I mean, I, I remember, 
I remember you were like telling me before the course the course that you were so scared because you haven't been in in, in school in a long time and exactly. you're not sure. But I I as soon as I saw that I thought I immediately thought that I know that I, I think you're studious. That's what I think. I think you're really good in time management, and I think you you were studious at school, right? If I'm not correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so but still, sort of, man, like, it rubbed it, over. Yeah, it, it's difficult. But it, well, you, you, it's it's scary, you know. Like yeah, yes, you're not yes, you're not a kid anymore. Of it's course, like like yeah. you, it, yeah. like you going abroad and stuff like that. Like I mean, part of you's got to be nervous about. Oh that, yes, oh, yeah, it was it was very nerve wracking, and especially since it's same same as you, I've been practically doing the job for the past like four years and and, and working as a GP. But at the same time, I haven't like I I, I wasn't like reading and I wasn't touching books and especially since I do also have a history of academic procrastination you know and that <laughs> yeah, that's really <laughs> that, that that killed me when I was uh, in bachelor's in the medicine and uh, I stopped that habit but it still kind of creeps in from time to time but abroad it was very different I sort of like it was very weird because I sort of broke it and I found myself studying earlier on and and like you said Uh, doing it on a week to week or even uh, to a bi-weekly basis try catching up as as soon as I could uh and it's sort of uh, I'm glad I broke it because I was so scared that I fall into that habit again but uh, obviously also the help of uh, my wife my wife was so encouraging like uh because she was uh, helping out with Talia while I had the studies so she had to sacrifice her time in school and 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 say with start with Talia and obviously when I finished and she had to go to her exams and I didn't have anything I was just waiting for my mark I I took over Talia so she could focus because she was uh, lagging behind uh, because she she sort of like took over my daughter when I was <laughs> in that pressure <laughs> It was so hard, but we we it managed we managed to get things uh, done and uh, and the experience itself of doing this it sort of like gave us a perspective. Okay, we could do this, but we need to manage our time, you know. Yeah, and that's just yeah. it. I mean, ultimately, that's the the life lesson here is time. Uh, even even right now, like as we do this, I have a book beside me called uh, <laughs> which one am I on? Leading Digital: Turning Technology into Business Transformation. And I actually have to finish this today. I have no choice. So as soon as we're done, I basically will set up this podcast. I will go over to the couch and I will read nonstop till I finish that. And tomorrow <clears throat> I have three classes that I've got to start to put together a, a sort of like a, <clears throat> a time frame. So mm. it's going to be, you know, week one, what I have to read, week two, what I have to read, stuff like that. And this is a week in advance. And this is, I think, why I did so well in the first semester was just that, was just preparing yourself both mentally, physically. And honestly, it's called disconnecting from the games. Hmm. And yeah. I really thought the truth is I thought this would be way harder than it was. Mm. And it really wasn't. It really, really wasn't. So the good news is I am not an addict. That's uh, that's good because <laughs> I had no uh, no withdrawal symptoms or anything yeah. like that. I Same just, here. Uh, <laughs> Same no, it's here. like it, it's. I think it's like when you focus your attention mm. on other things. And the truth is, though, dude, I didn't buy anything. Like nothing. Good for you. Good like, for you, man. No, because I, I figured I was like, what the hell is the point? Of, yeah. of of buying stuff that's just gonna like sit collect here. dust yeah. no that's just it so i mean i had pre-ordered dragon quest and that i kept of course because like that's one of my my series uh i would have purchased if there was a zelda naturally would have purchased that you know no question about that yeah. Um, and the that big was franchises, that. yeah, 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 here. exactly. I I've mean, been doing the same, basically, uh, just just the big stuff uh, and stuff that are like heavily discounted, like indie stuff. You know, if they're heavily discounted, I go for. It. Uh, aside from that, I'm trying to like do the same thing with drawing. I I skipped Spider Man. I skipped God of War. I skipped like a lot of PS4 big ones. Detroit. Yep. Yep. I did not get those, and they're all like discounted right now. And even now. I'm not opting to go for them because I know I don't have time. I have a lot of, I have a backload as it is with all the games well, that I have. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you bring up a good point about this like heavily discounted uh, sort of like, what what is going on here with this? Because is, it's insane. It's so different than previous years too. Like a month or two after release and they're discounted 40, 30%. You see these weird prices. I'm like, damn man, why did I buy this? Even for me, yeah, man. The, the PlayStation Classic, I bought it and I regret it because, oh God, I because did of not. the bad reviews and now it's discounted 40%. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, that's because actually of, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Mm. Did you have you played any of the classic systems? Uh, the Super Nintendo Classic, but I didn't give a he- I didn't play it heavily. Like I dabbled with it. I would say. Okay, because yeah. I purchased the NES Classic and the uh, SNES Classic. I mean, I even received them as gifts uh, and everything mm. else. Uh, Cranberry bought me the Famicoms and all that jazz. And the SNES Classic, hands down, is the one. It's actually attached to my recording setup here. Nice. And yeah. that's the one that like, I've, I've actually beaten like a good seven or eight games on that system. Oh, nice. That's so oh, oh, nice. You dedicated a lot of time to that. Yeah. Cool. Like, well, yeah. dedicated a lot of time. I mean, some of the games. That's they only before take... the NBA, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's also like a lot of those games, like you can beat it in an hour. So it's not, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, like even, even yeah. Zelda, like I can polish that off and yeah, like it's no just time. earthbound and final fantasy. I think those are the two longest ones. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like the RPGs yeah. are the ones that are going to, you know, take a while for you to, do Mm. but interestingly enough like the nes classic they that that really is an awesome system but i just i think i can't believe i'm gonna say this but i just i think the games now they're starting to get a little too old and this brings this brings up an interesting thing that i noticed that nintendo did i can't even talk about the playstation classic because i didn't get one and um because well it's just because (laughs) it was right at the time when the nba was uh was like you know in motion so i wasn't checking websites on video games i wasn't checking i was so out of the loop man like yeah it's it's, it's a good thing man because if if, with all the intensive purposes the 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 thing is absolutely disappointing from every from all the impressions that have been coming out they didn't put any effort into the software they put a lot of effort into the exterior and the looks of the console but uh software wise and emulation wise uh even the choices of games it, it's absolutely disappointing you know the only reason why i got it is because i know it was going to be hacked eventually and mm-hmm. i could do what i want with it eventually that's the only reason why i bought it <laughs> no it's 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 really mm disappointing i think mm. is because like i have since read tons of stuff right on the on the playstation classic and stuff and i i don't quite understand how it was butchered as yeah, badly they, as they, it was they butchered. flopped it man it, it's it, especially since the uh, uh sony's legacy with ps1 emulation it's 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 uh, spot on like they did well with the psp with the vita with the ps3 I mean, they, we didn't complain of the emulation quality with all these, and, and with this one, I don't know. They they outsourced it. I don't know what they did. They they used a a open source simulator, but they didn't use it optimally with the hardware that they equipped it with. So a lot of games they don't play as you 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 should be like uh, expecting the frame drops and whatnot and all that. Yeah, it's it's I I, I don't understand. I just don't understand yeah. why did they use like European uh, ROMs. Instead of North yeah, American yeah. ROMs, why did so they? So baffling, and it is baffling, and yeah. and I don't understand. The only logical explanation I could think of is like, oh well, it was PlayStation Europe that put this together. But even that, like, I'm I'm holding on the straws, you know, like Mm-mm-mm. it 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 doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense because with the Super Nintendo Classic, they use the US ROMs for Europe. And, and, and the UK. Yes, of so. course, because today yeah. it's it's like, you know, the televisions that are released today are not the televisions that were released years ago. So it doesn't make any gosh darn sense. It would be, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like yeah. today, if you go and buy a an LCD screen or whatever, or 4K TV, it's going to be at the same rate. It doesn't matter if you're in Jeddah or if you're in Montreal or yes. if you're, it doesn't yes. matter. It's the, the exact same thing. Yeah. So I, I think I don't the only it. excuse they could, they could say is that they wanted like multiple languages for certain games, but that also doesn't make sense. Like uh, I'd rather play something uh, NTSC based in 60 frames per second with only English yeah, no. rather than getting the, like a German with, with a butchered port. So yeah. And, and yeah. I don't even, I don't buy that. I truly yeah. don't buy that. And just when they announced the um, the games, right? Just the games, I was like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> Half of the games are not nostalgic. <laughs> no, exactly. And it's like you know, seriously, like, I mean, you don't need to be a fanboy, and people can disagree with me if they want, but seriously, PlayStation will go down in history 
as one of the most influential consoles of all time. Absolutely agreed, yeah. And and it's it really seriously was disgraceful to to release what they released. And I I understand that because it was such an influential system that there is literally no way. It's sort of like the Super Nintendo where there's no way you would be able to release that kind of like classic sort of setup without disappointing some people in terms of the uh, the the lineup of software. Mm. There's you're going to be disappointed in one way or another just because there were just so many games that were awesome. However, in this case, I I don't understand. Like, how do you release this without Castlevania, without Crash, without a Spyro? And I get it. There were all these remakes that were coming out yeah. and stuff, and I totally understand that. But that does not excuse the fact, like, if you couldn't get those games on there for any reason, then you don't release the system. You just don't do it because it makes no sense. It's like releasing a, a SNES classic without a link to the past or Super Metroid on there because they're going to be releasing, uh, you know, some yeah. HD remake of it. Well, then you just don't release the platform. I right. mean, makes no and, sense. Uh, and if, if even if they, I would say uh, it's, it's just weird. Also, the quality control was bad, even with the games that, they released it in yeah i know what why why is the quality control bad why didn't anybody check how good the emulation was and and uh, give us more options and settings you know the only the only way to to legally get into the options or the settings of the emulation is to uh attach a certain keyboard like a certain type of keyboard to the usb uh, port 2 and you have to like press escape or anything or like a combination of buttons and you'll get the the options of the emulator believe it or not that's mm-hmm. how bad this uh, this system is and the and the only reason to do it uh, if you want to get a quick access is to hack it like uh, get, get a usb and put all the files and uh, you could uh, even put a better emulator than the one they installed on on the system it doesn't be, it's so funny how fans are are covering now uh, sony's uh, footsteps yeah it's i, I don't know i i don't know man I, I was no just <laughs> so disappointed because I thought the SNES Classic was incredible. I mean, it's so Same incredible here. that it's literally, I'm touching it right now. It's That's how close it is to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's its right beside me. I'm dusting it because it's been a little while. And and it, it hurts, man. It really hurts. Now, this leads me to something else I just wanted to touch upon. Well, I say quickly. It doesn't have to be quickly. Yeah. The infamous online switch connectivity stuff is out. It's there. It's the service is live. Mm. And uh, because Smash came out and uh, Steven wanted to play Diablo. And I don't know if you know, I'm actually a big fan of uh, Diablo. So uh, my, my mouse pad is actually of Diablo 3 from like, you know, I don't know, seven or eight years ago or whenever the hell oh, the wow. game came out. Yeah. So I uh, I purchased the game on the PlayStation 4. I played the hell out of that. And I played it on the Switch. It just came out in November. And uh, when my MBA was done, that was actually the first game that... Uh, that's, a, that's a good game I to return to. Yeah. So it was uh, fun. And Steven said like, oh, you know, we don't need to chat or anything. You can just come on and show me how to play and stuff. So we did that. And in okay. order to do that, obviously, I had to join the uh, service so i joined the service and um, uh, basically it was pretty it was pretty cool i noticed they had those uh those controllers there's those nes controllers and Mm. uh, i purchased those right away this was before i found this bad boy which was also right beside me which was the uh, eight bit though the SN30 Pro Bluetooth gamepad. Have you yeah, tried any of these? Such a, that's such a cool controller. Uh, I've tried the the first version. Uh, it's such a cool controller. Like uh, it's basically an extension of uh, the Super Nintendo controller with sticks. It's uh, so awesome. Yeah, man, and it works freaking well. I was I was shocked at how how good that uh, that controller is. Not only the, the controller, but like the build quality. Where I was like, wow, this, like, it feels like a Super Nintendo controller, like, taken to the sort of next level type of thing. By the way, did you receive your NES controllers or not yet? I did. 
Oh, I nice. Did indeed. Uh, and so I, I tried ordering it, man, but they don't. They're not accepting any credit cards outside of the U.S. So that sucks. Oh, uh, so you'd have to. <laughs> do you know anyone in the states? Well, you know Tim. Uh, uh, yeah, I do. I didn't try. I didn't attempt to contact him. But yeah, yeah contact should, him. Should, yeah, I mean, yeah, Tim. I Tim. Tim is like probably the nicest human alive. Yeah, so yeah, he, he is. He'll he'll gladly do that for you, man. If you uh, if you put his address and stuff, or give him the money or whatever, and just give the the login information, so that yeah, that's, you... that's a good idea. I'll actually try to contact him. Hopefully the the Ennis controls are not uh, out of stock. Yet, no, so. they are not. They yeah. are not out of stock. Okay. So well, I I actually that. purchased those before I bought the uh, that other like it uh, what is it eight bit do eight bit do okay uh, controller. And Stephen was so funny because he was like, oh, my God, I know you're going like you were going to buy those. What a waste and this and that. So the truth is this. Okay, so straight up, you can only use them for one and only one thing. So just know that right away, right? The NES uh, library, yeah. That's right. So (laughs) like if you're expecting to use them for anything else, you're going to be disappointed. I was shocked at how awesome they really are. I'll be honest. I, I, I was like, wow. Uh, they made, like, I wish, kind of, they were somehow compatible with the NES Classic. Like, part of me is like, man, I wish Nintendo would have released, like, a little adapter or something yeah, so that man. you could sync them. Because I was like, this is is absolutely awesome. And right now, you would know better than I. Hmm. Um, I, I haven't looked too much into the, the NES games that are available. I did play the special Zelda, which by the way, I thought was a really, really smart idea. I don't know if you've checked out any of those things, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, actually I was going to say the exact same thing. I, I, one of the first games that I delved into was the SP edition of Zelda and, I agree with you. It's the smartest, uh, one of the smartest idea that, ideas they've ever done. And I wish they advertised the special stuff with the service because people would have received this positively. Oh, they're releasing like hacks of their old games, but they're modified to a point like they make it easier or they give you certain things. So basically, the, the SP Zelda is a more straightforward version of it. And uh, for I, for me, I absolutely loved it because... All the flaws that I have with the original Zelda, and I and I, I do hold a lot of like I know it's the first in uh, one of the first and one of the most innovative games ever, and it started a, a trend in in gaming with the action adventure genre. But looking back at it now, I, I I it's for me it's the worst game because I even though I hold nostalgia towards it, it's the worst game in the series bar none because of all the flaws that are associated with NES games in which they keep things hidden and the, the map is not like. I can't see the map. I can't. I don't know where the secrets are. Yeah. I have to burn every bush and bomb every wall to find something. Yeah. You know, I, I, that's, that's kind of annoying. But with this one, they they addressed everything, man. <laughs> they even like the stuff that you should be burning and like revealing secrets. This the, the, the staircase is there. You don't need to burn it. So yeah. that, I found that to be very cool. I love that, dude. <laughs> I I okay. So uh, you should you should try it i mean again it it all depends on your time and stuff like that Mm -hmm. but if you get the chance there is a game on the um what the hell is their store called the eShop. that's it yeah uh there's a game on the eShop from sega part of the sega ages series Mm -hmm. that's called fantasy star fantasy star okay okay. i heard of it yeah it's an rpg series Mm -hmm. yeah now i you don't need like I don't know how much it costs. If it's twenty bucks or something like that, forget it. But if it's like five dollars or seven dollars or ten dollars, ten is kind of pushing it. But okay, it's worth it just for you to experience, even if you don't play it. Okay, mm. that's why I'm saying like if it's if it's under ten bucks, I'd say go for it just to see what the hell I'm talking about. But what Sega and uh, I forget the studio that's doing all of these. Sorry, um, mm. I don't remember what it, what they're called, but. What they have done is they they have essentially made my dream uh, 8-bit game sort of remakes. I think this is brilliant. So the original Fantasy Star used rudimentary first-person 3D dungeons, okay? Okay, okay. The problem with this was... Yeah. The problem, like, it, it looked amazing. Seriously, if you see it, you're going to be like, what the hell? Like, how is this played essentially on a beefed up NES? Like, how is this possible? <laughs> and 
the problem was that it didn't have a map because for whatever reason, they either did install one because of space limitations or just because they didn't think of it. So you had to literally draw a map. Okay. Oh, wow. They're just, okay. yeah, there was just no access to a map. But what, what these guys have done, and I think this is so flipping cool, is there's the original game. So the unaltered, you know, this is it. This is the original Sega Master System game. Or you can do this enhanced edition. And what the enhanced edition does is it adds entirely new elements to the game. So in the case of Fantasy Star, it actually gives you a map. Wow. So just that, now I can't explain this enough, that one element fundamentally changes the game and makes it outstanding because now you're not lost, right? Like yeah. as you go in, you'll know, oh, I can go left, right, or forward. Okay, so I'll go forward. And, and is the map synced up with the game itself? Yes, it is. Or, wow, that must have taken a while to program. Well, this is just it. And, and But because these guys have started to do this, like they did the same thing with Sonic the Hedgehog. They added in um, the spin dash the from spin Sonic dash 2. The drop dash That's from right. Sonic. That's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But again, you don't need to do that. They also mm -hmm. did for like Thunder Force 4, I think it was, or Thunder Force 3. They added like mm -hmm. what they're calling like a child's mode. And while that might seem insulting, it actually is brilliant. It's it's a brilliant way to get into shooters. Now, I haven't bought any of these, okay, except for Fantasy Star. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was over at my friend's for, for, like, the holidays there just to see his family. And he was showing me some of these things, and I was just so impressed. I was like, this is... Now, this is how you make 8-bit games more approachable to a new generation because you're absolutely right man you are a hundred percent right that going back and playing the original legend of zelda today unaltered is very very hard in a lot of senses because you have no clues of where any of the secrets are and i understand we're gonna have people are gonna be like oh don't be a bunch of babies and suck it up nancy and all this kind of stuff but the truth is that, guys, like, look at the Link to the Past. Look at what a Link to the Past did, right? They color-coded so that you knew where to put a bomb. Yeah. They made it obvious where cracks were and stuff like that. And I'm just... I would also argue also Zelda 2 is a much better game. It aged much better than Zelda 1, surprisingly, even though it has a completely different perspective and people call it the Black Sheep. I love, I don't know why, I like, just like going back to Zelda 2, uh, despite the challenge. It's more approachable. It has these NES quirks there, here and there, but I, I love playing Zelda 2. I don't know why. No, uh, it's good, man. Like, yeah. Zelda 2, the reason, well, personally, the reason why I think Zelda 2 uh, holds up is just because of its its design. You know what mm. I mean? Like, it, it's the way it was, it was designed. So With Zelda 1... Platformer, the, yeah. Yeah, with Zelda 1, I there's a couple of fundamental issues that I have with the game. And listen, I'm not a programmer or anything like that, so I have no idea how complicated what I'm about to say is. But, like, the map sucks in in the original Zelda. I mean, really. Like, the overworld map, yeah, yeah. It, it's, you know, but... Playing Fantasy Star, or playing, maybe that's kind of that's kind of harsh. Looking at <laughs> Fantasy Star, <laughs> and then looking at Thunder Force, and looking at at Sonic, I'm like, you know, this gives me a lot of ideas. And Nintendo sort of sort of touched upon it with that special edition yes. of uh, of Zelda. But I was like, oh man, could you imagine if they, if they just had a full map? Oh, well, wow. yeah, like a full map. If they made like if they color coded, so like let's say, man, um, that would that would make night and day difference for this this game. I would go back to it and try to complete it. But wait, <laughs> I'm not done. There's one other thing I would do, and yeah. this is the thing I would add the uh, eight way directions from a link to the past. That mm. has always been, always been the thing that I hate about the original Legend of Zelda is that yeah. Link only moves in four, in four. directions. Yeah. Even uh, Link's Awakening on the Game Boy, they eight added directions. the eight-way uh, yeah. eight movement. You're, you're right, you're right. And that wow. if they yeah. did that, 
If nothing else, if they just did that with the eight-way directions, I would play it immediately. Like right now, I'd hang up and, and go play it. Because that's that's always been, you know, like a sore point for me because it ages the game so much. Like when you're going yes. after those dark nuts, uh, what are the dark yeah. nut or whatever the hell they're called. Oh my gosh, that that's is so annoying. Oh, it's like yeah. the the friggin' worst. That's not fun. It's annoying. Even the bats, as hell. man. The bats are so, even the, the the keys. The keys are annoying. No, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're such simple enemies, but they're sometimes like really annoying to pinpoint with the four directions. You're right. That's so, a good idea. There you Nintendo, go. Free money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Steal it, baby. Steal it. And the other one was Metroid. Uh, a very very simple thing because i didn't like the special version they did of metroid i didn't like that it's basically you're souped up right before ridley i'm like okay well thanks oh, wow. i'm okay. like whoop de doo guys that's okay. not like the whole game's over but thank you i i didn't i didn't understand the concept that they were going for at least with zelda it was like okay you know like here's the i think was it the white sword you had uh, I think so, and they also gave you the uh, the uh, one of the rings, so yeah. you have extra armor on you. Yeah, 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 and a couple of hearts, and they and gave, they gave you the 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 bracelet as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And so, full rupees, right? Like yeah, fifty five yeah. rupees or yeah. something of that sort. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they started you at the beginning of the game with yep. Metroid. It's like you're right near the end of the game. I'm like, okay, guys, like I don't get it. I'm like, I just don't get it because. Yeah. Like me, even weird. me. I went in, I beat Ridley, and then I'm like, okay, well, now what? Because I'm like, I don't know where the hell to go. I just started the game. I'm like, I don't know anything. I don't remember yeah. any of this. That, that is, uh, yeah, that is uh, a weird one to, to, I don't know why they did that. <laughs> yeah, it was just, I just thought it was weird. What they could do, what I would do, again, if I were to add Fantasy Star, or so like the Sega Ages sort of line, is uh, again, again uh, who was developing it? You, 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 uh, is I'll it check. internally from Sega? No, it's it's a uh, it's another company. Okay. Hold it's on. like oh, an external just... company. Yeah, yeah. Sega. Uh, I, I, I'm wondering if it's the same people who have who are who worked on the SNK collection that came out also for the Switch recently, because a lot of people have been praising that like crazy. So, oh really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, like they. I I I I don't have nostalgia towards these games. They're more old school. Like they're older than the Neo Geo. You know that that, that more or older SNK arcade games and NES games. Uh, and everybody has been praising the availability of these. Like they they weren't available before. Some of them were broken. They fixed it. You know, they, there were a couple of fixes they had to the emulation quality, and the quality of life changes. And everybody has been praising it. So I'm wondering if it's the same company. I don't know. Uh, if I could find it, I can't find uh, the. Uh, so yeah, that's okay. something to add into your wish list. I, I'm sure, as an SNK fan, you would uh, really appreciate that collection in particular. Well, I'm actually speaking of SNK. I'm really happy because uh, the latest uh, game from NG Dev Team is uh, getting released shortly. So I'm really looking forward to that. Within four weeks. Too bad I'll be in school, but it's still <laughs> going to be uh, cool. I'll, I'll get back to that. I just want to finish what yeah. I'm saying with Metroid, where okay. m like a map would be one. And another thing mm -hmm. that I would do is I would add in um, the ability for your shots to go the like basically the distance because Farther. yeah, like the original original. Uh, sort of like projectile that you have is the absolute yeah. worst. Like I've, I've played, I've played it for a bit uh, uh, when it uh, came out on the Switch, and I, I find it a bit annoying. <laughs> okay, just couldn't continue. Well, that's <laughs> that's just it. But um, so yeah, that that's pretty much it. And I forget if I'm not mistaken, that one you can shoot up, but you can't crouch, if I recall oh, okay. correctly, in that one. Mm, interesting. Yeah, so anyways, just some of these things. I know it would require a lot of work. I totally understand that. It's just yeah. that once once you, if like I say, if you have the chance and you check out any of Fantasy those, Star. Yeah, definitely. if you check that out, it makes such a yeah. huge difference yeah. that it's uh, like... I would definitely, if they, uh, if they do, they give Sonic 2 the same treatment, I would go for Sonic 2 immediately because that's, that's the one I hold... Uh, nost more nostalgic Nostalgia towards for, compared yeah. to Sonic One. Yeah. yeah, Sonic Two is amazing. So if they put in the same effort, I would I would uh, buy that day one, <laughs> just to give it. But Fantasy Star, I'll put that on my list. Yeah. Well, definitely. like I say, I mean, it's really it's only if you like have five dollars or something that you want to waste. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah, because yeah. I'm not suggesting you play it or anything like that. It is a really just good game. With it. Yeah. But it's more just to show you like play the original first. 
and then and you, then look at the yeah for like five yeah. minutes or something, and then yeah. try uh, try the enhanced one, and you'll see what I'm talking about, where it's just like wow. And I would just love Nintendo to to do something like that okay, yeah. because there's real potential, man. Yes, actually, I, uh, people would 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 eat that up if if they add that to their their service in the NES games, and definitely. <laughs> but those you, controllers, uh, man, they're not bad. Seriously, I know Stephen mm-hmm. was making fun of me, saying like, "Oh my God, you just love buying everything and all this sort of jazz." <laughs> but the the truth is, like, they they work remarkably well, and really gives me some ideas for the uh, SNES games. Yeah, hopefully they they eventually add that library soon. That would be amazing. Yeah, uh, and I think honestly, I think they that. need to do that sooner rather yeah. than later because yeah, I, hence why they're discontinuing both the NES and the SNES Classic next year. I think yeah. they'll they're going to be starting to like seriously look into expanding that library more. Uh, yeah, and the I, NES I, Classic is obsolete now. That's right, and it's just. Again, no offense to like the NES, but these games don't hold up yes. nearly as yeah. well. Yeah, it's exactly as I said when we were talking about the impressions. Uh, I remember like long ago we were talking about when they announced the online stuff. Uh, yep. I what I what I expected to do with them and uh, what I predicted I was gonna do it. it it's ba- it basically the same thing that happened. I played, I dabbled with these games for like a week. And I tried the online a bit, like the online functionality. Actually, my wife was because uh, uh, what they, what they have. Uh, her sister has kids, and one of the kids has a switch. So my wife is nostalgic towards Doctor Mario. So okay. she played from her house, and because right now we we don't have a home, so she's at her parents, and I'm at my parents. So she played Doctor Mario. We, play, we played versus Doctor Mario online, and that was quite fun. It, it took a while to get things synced up. But that was a bit fun to do. But I again, I, w- I wouldn't like do it on a daily basis. It, it was like one off type of thing, you know. Yeah. No, exactly, man. So mm. I don't know. Uh, Have you been playing anything else, by the way, aside from Diablo and the Fantasy Star, or that's, that's uh, the... Pokemon? Let's go. I was playing a little oh, yeah. bit of that uh, with uh, just just wanted to try it out. It really is a remake, eh, by the way, of uh, Pokemon Yellow, like straight up. Mm. Steven's uh, review, I didn't uh, watch it all, but what I've watched, it was quite comprehensive. I, li- I liked what he was talking. Yeah, well, Steven, yeah. Steven is Steven, right? Like, he yes. goes uh, he goes yeah. hardcore crazy with that. And other than that, I downloaded uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate, and I have yet to, and I don't think I'm going to get the chance oh. because... Oh, man, uh, that's too bad. Too well, bad. that's what this is. I basically wanted to end the podcast with you just talking a little bit about that because I know that's your bread and butter. So I wanted to know, like, does it live up to your height? Like, does it tell me uh, about what you think? Oh, yeah, it's, it definitely lives up to the hype. Uh, I, I wouldn't put it as my favorite game of this year, but uh, from, in terms of the series, yes, it does live up to the hype as, as my, my favorite game in the series. Uh, again, I haven't. Uh, played it as much as melee or as much as brawl until up to this point but with smash 4 i was i remember all of us being because it's usually the multiplayer game with me and my friends you know we play local couch and with smash 4 we got into it for a while and then it fizzled off nobody wanted to to play anymore Uh, even when the dlc came out i was buying the dlc for characters day one and i was so hyped for cloud but by that time, nobody wanted to play. I don't know. There's something about Smash 4 that didn't... I don't know. Some, the, the longevity of the game. And from a single-player standpoint, uh, Smash 4 was very disappointing on the Wii U. Uh, they had a, a mode called Smash Tour, and it was so dumb, you know? And especially since you're co- co- in compared to the 3DS version. The 3DS version had the superior uh, single-player mode, which was Smash Run. Uh, which also can be played uh, local multiplayer, and that's an amazing mode, man. So with Smash Ultimate, they uh, I understood the design philosophy. Like, uh, remember Brawl? I don't know if you played Brawl, uh, Jared. Did you remember? Did you ever play the single player of Brawl? Yeah, yes, I yeah. did. Do you remember how like engrossing it was, and it, like it's 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 like a two D platformer built in a fighting game, something right? Of that sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had its flaws. It's not perfect, but it was so fun, and, and it had a lot of replay value. They basically took the the melee adventure mode, which lasted fifteen minutes, and they expanded on, on ten hours, and they put in cinematics. It was very fun to go through. Uh, I understood what they were doing with the ultimate because they had to dedicate their resources to the 
playable characters and the everyone is here and the 75 characters so they can they uh, with brawl single player they i don't think it can be replicated at this point even with uh, future games because uh, they're focusing more on like characters and play and, and 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 balance and whatnot so they took the 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 route of okay we have 75 characters let's design a single player mode that's flexible around you know around yeah. these characters uh, and it's uh I don't know if you've seen anything before. Basically, when you're playing the adventure mode, uh, it's uh, the event matches from Smash Melee. Like, each match has a certain type of mission. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, but they did it in a way that they're sort of uh, uh, sending off or b- putting nostalgic references to, pr- to any, like, uh, Nintendo franchises, even, even obscure ones. Like, for example, one that stands up uh, that, that, that uh, I remember with, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, like, a fando over, fan, fanboyed over was uh, uh, basically there is a spirit of Geno, okay? And that's mm-hmm. the only Square Enix <laughs> spirit you'll see in the game. And what they did was they the battle was uh, you fight against all the uh, characters from Super Mario RPG with Bowser, Peach, and uh, and Sheik as Gino, and Sheik has a a blaster, so she has the aesthetic of Gino, and she works as Gino. And instead of Mallow, they put in Kirby. Okay. So that's that's how the that's the basic design philosophy of, of Spirits mode and the Adventure mode. They put these nostalgic references, even stuff like from Sonic and Metal Gear, like they put the Shadow Spirit and Sonic. Has the black uh, uh, paint on and she, it acts like Shadow the Hedgehog, so it's it's kind of fun, but it's uh, it's more of like a portable experience. Uh, if you're gonna grind through and try to finish the the the, the adventure mode in one or two, or uh, you want to finish it at like the the least amount of sittings as possible, it's gonna be very repetitive because it's just event matches or battles in succession, and that could get boring to a point. But if you're if you're like playing an hour a day. Or half an hour dabbling yep. in it. It's so fun. So yeah, uh, and uh, with the characters, uh, it's so overwhelming, dude. Like, <laughs> who do you pick? <laughs> like seventy-five people. Like, I'm sure when you uh, open it up at some point, like, where where do I start? But they did a smart design philosophy for, especially for people like you. They don't give you everybody immediately. You, you only start with eight people or eight characters. And the way you unlock characters, again, Mr. Sakurai, he's uh, so smart. And, and, and uh, I don't know if you remember Millie and Bra- Brawl. You had to do like certain things, like play uh, for 50 hours. Yeah, yeah. And then you unlock Mewtwo, for example. <coughs> play, uh, uh, try to finish the adventure more than two minutes, you know? Mm-hmm. They don't do that. It's not, it's not uh, they completely changed the design philosophy of unlocking characters. They made it so accessible. You could, uh, basically, if you play in any mode, even if you're playing online, you eventually unlock characters because they did three things. Like the more you play or the more you play distance, like the, it, it, uh, the game has like a hypothetical distance meter that we don't see. They don't put it anywhere in the options. So the more you play, the more distance is, is played, the more uh, likable you'll, you'll get a character like when, it, it, when the, thresh, the, thresh, the threshold is reached. That's one way to unlock. The other way to unlock is uh, anytime you beat classic mode with anybody, you unlock a, another character. And uh, the third way is if you uh, encounter them in the World of Light adventure mode. So you have three ways of unlocking characters, even if you're playing any, if you're playing with friends, because of the distance thing, uh, you could eventually, like in, uh, in 10 minute successions, you start getting characters to fight and unlocking characters. So it's very cool because it restricts you to playing what, what you have. You, you don't get overwhelmed immediately. Okay. You know? Okay. So it, it's okay. I like the I like uh, Kirby for now because it's uh, he's part of the eight characters, and then you unlock more, and then okay, I'm gonna start going going with an, uh, uh, with the new set of unlocks and trying another somebody else. So I, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy this type of like unlockable. It's very smart. I haven't seen a game done the, the, the uh, work like this in terms of unlockable before. Oh, it sounds awesome, man! It sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. I just hope I have time to actually, you know. Yeah, yeah, understandable, man. We need to uh, do an online session, you and I and uh, Steven, like we did with uh, Smash Wii U. Oh, God, that would be <laughs> something. I think, I think Steven, if I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to remember his profile, if, he, if he's playing it or not. I he, think he is. He is, yeah. Uh, we haven't met each other online yet uh, because of the time zones. We're not syncing up, but uh, I definitely would love to, uh, to dabble with Steven online. Yeah, it's so fun. Oh well, I'm I'm glad, and it's selling like gangbusters, man. Uh, it's man doing I, I like... think it's 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 heading towards being the best seller in the series because it surpassed Millie. 
if I'm not mistaken. Wow. And I don't know if it surpassed... Uh, uh, no, it didn't surpass Brawl. Brawl is the best selling because it was released on the Wii. So I think Brawl is the best selling one in the series. So it's, it still needs to surpass that. But it surpassed Smash 4, obviously, and Smash 64 and Melee. So looking forward to it. Hopefully it, it gets to the bestseller status. I'm and, sure. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, again, it's not without its flaws. It has a couple of like, you know, uh, nitpicks here and there, st- like modes that have not returned from the previous games because they prioritize the characters and the world of light. So a lot of things had to be sacrificed in favor of that. Understandable, but it's still like it's things, you know, like uh, you're used to break the targets and you're used to home run call test and you don't see those in this game so it's like oh it's too bad but it would be cool if they follow the philosophy they did with uh, i don't know if you're uh there are two games that nintendo released last year and they supported amazingly with dlc free dlc which is kirby star allies and uh mario tennis aces okay. uh, i don't know if you've been following those but uh kirby star allies i didn't follow it but a lot of people they were so amazed with the last dlc pack they released i think three or four basically uh kirby fanboys are, are just like they're drooling over it because they got a lot of playable characters you could play as from all past kirby games even the old ones from superstar and the super nintendo and i think that i don't want to spoil it but the final unlockable when you complete everything is something like i didn't expect it it's something from the game boy the first game like wow <laughs> I, I'm not following Kirby but I, I do follow Mario Tennis Aces they supported it throughout the year with new characters and it's sort of like when you get into Mario Tennis Aces with all the uh, patches and the new characters it's so fun to play so I'm hoping that uh, Smash Ultimate does something similar like they feed drip feed some of the modes in even though it's not part of the fighter pass that they are selling like they drip feed like free DLC it would be cool if they do that Oh, I'm curious. What kind of DLC do you want outside of like your standard fighters and stuff like that? Stages and whatnot? Uh, no, I was uh, thinking of like I was saying the modes that, that haven't returned from previous games, like home run contest. Oh, okay, 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 uh, right, 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 yeah, right. Uh, a, a actual all star mode that's similar to uh, the previous games. Uh, what else? The they break the targets, you know, that type of uh, DLC. And I also loved Smash Run. I get for the 3DS. That's an amazing, amazing fun mode. I would uh, imagine it, it uh, obviously with the 3DS, it was very hard to play because it was local only. Right. And it's very hard to find anybody who has a copy of uh, a Smash 3DS in my vicinity. So with the Switch, it's much easier, especially if they like add in online play or they do a couch play of Smash Run. Uh, it's such an amazing mode. It's so chaotic and fun to play, man. So hopefully, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they, well, they hopefully. Did, uh, they did talk about their adding spirits as like DLC here and there, like free spirits, like timed events and whatnot, which is cool. But I hope they expand more than that if time allows it. I already, I, I can't complain because they've offered so much with the uh, content and playable characters. I don't want to, like, I, I, it's very hard for me to nitpick on a game with so much content. And that's, and like, if you look at Fighters now, for example, like 20, 15 characters, they start off with, even Street Fighter V, they start off with these very low character selection and then they start drip feeding you as paid DLC. And it's so disappointing to see like the community fragmented because of like the waves of DLC that they added and the char- the initial character selections are also so low. I don't know if you agree with me on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Even Soul Calibur Six, that's that's actually a really good game. I played, a, uh, dabbled a bit with that with a friend, but the roster, like uh, I would, I was expecting something like bigger than that. But they, obviously, they uh, locked a lot of them behind the season pass that they're selling. So, for the fact that Smash offers more than seventy plus characters without DLC, that's that's amazing. I haven't seen any fighter that offered the same content. Yeah, no, seriously, it's that's the one thing I don't think anyone's going to be able to take away from uh, from this game. It's like the sheer content, man, is crazy. And for me, I just I have to try it before I go back to school because I really want to try Ridley and King K. Rule and stuff like that. And yeah. I know I have to unlock them, like you said, um, but really, I just want to try them out more than anything. <laughs> You will uh, love these two characters in particular. I didn't expect the new characters to be like amazing, but uh, especially King K. Rool. <laughs> I don't know they they because uh, I I love heavy heavy characters when I play uh, Smash. A lot of a lot of people like the lighter, faster ones, but I'm a heavy person. So uh, with King K. Rool, uh, they like he's a heavy character, but he doesn't have a lot of the 
heavy disadvantages because he has a lot of projectiles. Okay. So he's so different than all the other heavies in the game. It's not like he's not a, a, a copycat or a clone character, you know? Mm-hmm. He's so unique and he doesn't play like... Imagine, they, the game has 70 plus characters and King K. Rool plays so differently from everybody else. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing, man. That's what's so, like, wild. Yeah. And, like, I don't know. I just... Uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to this. And I was reading about the rumor that Erdrick might be coming from uh, Dragon Quest. That's a heavy Quest. rumor. Yeah, I, I hope that. Ha- I think you'll. Oh, you're gonna definitely be. <laughs> as soon as they announce that, you're gonna be board. You're gonna be on board. I would say. <laughs> well, exactly. I would certainly. I would certainly be. So I just realized the time here. We'll have to wrap this up to keep our uh, our regular scheduled time. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else you wanna wanna say? Uh, I'm trying to think. No, nothing in particular. It was just uh, nice uh, doing this podcast again and nice uh, catching up with you after so long. Uh, and again, I hope uh, you have uh, a nice break there and I hope you had a nice Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays with your family and friends. Uh, and uh, keep it up, Jared. Uh, you're, you've been doing well, man. And hopefully uh, when I talk to you, we talk to you next sooner than later and we'll... Uh, uh, hear the good news that you've uh, passed with flying colors well i sure hope so and thank you man and the same uh, goes to you there i really i uh, wish you all the best especially with the uh, the family extending uh, shortly oh, that's you. really exciting yeah, and thanks. uh we'll just have to you know keep up uh, just like i do with steven there uh we we keep track through you know whatsapp and stuff like yeah. that so i'll be sure to send you more texts and stuff and i'll ask uh, next time you're free. Maybe you can tag along and we can do another one of these because I, uh, I love doing this. Yeah, it's just nice catching up, even though, like, even if we have it, if we're short on time and, like, we talk for half an hour, which I don't think we're, we're, we're really talkative people. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we like conversing with each other. So, uh, an hour at least. But even if we don't, if we're so pressed and we have, like, half an hour of catching up, I'm, I'm fine with that. So, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's fun to catch up with everybody. And hopefully, we'll have a full house next time with Steven and whatnot exactly well for everyone else you all take it easy given when this is i think uh what would be in order here is to say yeah this will be this is being posted on the 30th so i guess happy new year uh, is in order for everybody yeah. happy new year everybody hopefully you listen to this uh in a uh, perfect time for you guys yeah it'll be nice <laughs> and with that uh, i wish everyone a healthy and uh, happy new year and take care everyone we'll catch bye. you in two weeks bye bye